So let's get one thing straight. I am not being paid to state any of this. I am not obligated to say any of this, but this is just my God's honest feelings, I guess, and kind of my experience going from not having a Class A license to working for PAM Transport. Um, I went through their student program and I guess this is going to be my start to now uh, rundown. So contacted Driver Solutions, got my start date, uh, put in my application, etc, etc. Uh, and I went to Suburban Trucking School in Romulus, Michigan. I live about an hour from there and Romulus is my home terminal. Um, the school is a little rundown, I'm not gonna lie, but the people there are good, they're honest, they want you to succeed, and they do with what they can. Like, they get by with what they have, is what I mean by that. Um, they're all drivers, or were drivers, the instructors, uh, so they know what to expect and what to show you before you get out on the road. My hotel from Pam was, well, Driver Solutions, I should say, was a little shitty, if I say so myself. Um, it was a Motel 6. Um, it's on the same road as the school, but it was a Motel 6, about four or five miles up the road. Uh, bugs, basic cable television, smelled like pot the entire time. I mean, it was, it was honestly kind of bad, but luckily I lived close to home. So if I really, if I got weirded out or needed to go away from it, I could go home. Uh, not a lot of people have that option and you probably won't, but I was lucky enough to live close enough that uh, I didn't have to stay in the hotel. I just did because my car was a little, you know, didn't want to risk it. So I stayed at the hotel most days. A uh, couple of times I did go home though. Um, they taught me in a manual. Uh, I took my test in a manual. It was an international pro star. Um, so I don't have an automatic restriction. And to my understanding, that's how Pam does it for all of their students that go to a school, they don't let you test in a manual because they don't want you to have that restriction on your license. That's how it was explained to me from Driver Solutions. It's because Pam does not want you to have that restriction. And that stems from Pam knowing that they are a starter company. I mean, you can start a business with this company, but really their sole purpose is they get your foot in the door, they get you your year of experience, so that way you can move on to bigger, better companies or smaller and better companies. Who knows? Um, it just depends on your area, what you're interested in hauling, stuff like that. That comes from you. Um, but they also have LTO, which I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so the school, the lectures, all that was fairly simple. Uh, if you don't have your permit, they help you get your permit. Uh, so we actually, I think it was half of my class, no permit. I mean, I had my permit when I went, my roommate had his permit when he went. So our first week was literally just fucking off in the classroom. I mean, I'm not even kidding. We just sat there screwing around, playing on our phones, wandering the hall. I mean, the only reason we were there was we needed the hours. Um, we needed the school hours to be able to graduate into yard training, which is where you learn maneuvers and stuff like that. Once you get the maneuvers down, then you move on to road driving, um, and then you take your test, obviously. They give you pre-trip packets. I mean, when we just kind of sat around, I studied my pre-trip. That's the biggest thing you've got to learn while there is pre-trip, pre-trip, pre-trip can't pass the pre-trip you won't even get out on the road and I'm get used to saying properly mounted and secured <laughs> um so I graduated 
And a couple months, or not a couple months, a couple weeks later, uh, this was during Thanksgiving, so I didn't get picked up right away. A uh, couple weeks later, got picked up by my mentor. One thing I will say is you will have a couple of those stereotypical truck drivers where they don't shower, they don't take care of themselves, uh, they're a little bit closed-minded, to say the least. It doesn't mean they're not good people. My guy that trained me, great dude. He took care of me. He made sure that I knew what I needed to know before sending me off into the real world. And he was super patient. Oh, super patient. Because there were a few things uh, after graduation that I didn't quite fully understand, especially the Qualcomm, the e-log. Uh, that was still a little bit of a foreign technology to me. So he was very patient in teaching me about that. Yours may not be so patient. I don't know. But in my experience, my guy was patient. Um, he basically let me drive whenever I needed to, or I felt I needed to. And he gave me pointers because I had a, I had prior experience of driving a semi. Uh, it was more of an equivalent of a yard dog, I guess. I knew how to keep it in between the lines. I knew, I knew how to hook up a trailer. I knew swing wide but he taught me things like how to tell where your trailer is going to go he taught me how to a better way of keeping it in between the lines i my method of doing so was literally just watching my side mirrors but he told me look at the front mirrors if you can see the line in your front mirrors you're good if you can't see one or the other you're too far to that side and that's how i learned to keep a semi straight going down the freeway um, he didn't really let me do a whole lot of backing, uh, to say the least. I got my minimum amount, but they were never really complicated backs. He taught me how to set up for a straight back, and that was it, really. Uh, 45 was one of them, but he was super tense the entire time, so I, I don't deal with other people getting stressed very well. Um... So for me, backing has been a little bit difficult. I mean, I've I've scratched my truck already backing into a spot when I was in New Jersey. Uh, the company wasn't too mad about it. Just said, don't let it happen again. Slap me on the wrist. Um, so make sure when you get your mentor, make sure the biggest thing that you tell them is that you want to learn some backing because that is the hardest part about this job. To tell you the fucking truth. <laughs> backing is the hardest part of this job and if you are not good at it it's okay but you need to get good at it and that's something I've been working on I've been challenging myself with backing here lately um, moving on to the trucks so my truck is a 2021 international LT I love this truck I mean I love this truck case you can't tell I've got color change LEDs um, and to tell you the truth I would sell everything I own to be able to purchase this truck as an LTO which is leased to own the company offers it to all students after 90 days uh, three months um, but the only problem is their selection does not include the international LT so I will never be able to buy this truck which breaks my heart because I I didn't think I was going to like it. And as soon as I pulled my first load with it, I fell in love with it. I mean, the space, the look, it's just perfect. Everything about this truck is just perfect. It's set up just how I would set up a truck. I've got a TV. I've got an Xbox. I've got a coffee maker, a microwave, a mini fridge plenty of storage in this truck this is a storage cabinet there's one at the foot of the bed there's uh clothes shelves right next to the over there right above where my phone is that's where i keep my food i've got storage under the bed and i've got no mattress up here it's down here uh stacked on top of the other mattress so up here is just storage galore i've got a paper towel holder up at the very top 
and two cubbies, the entire, it like wraps around the front of the cab. That's all storage also. So there is plenty of storage in this truck. Excuse me. Um, it's given me a couple of small issues. So like one of my issues with this truck is it is a little high tech for me. Um, to me, I'm used to old school, like 1990 and older trucks. Um, so when I first got into this truck and, you know, sometimes when you feel a breeze, you know, you kind of sail over and you kind of ride the white line. Yeah, it has a lane departure system and it will actually pause your music and beep at you annoyingly, I might add, every time you get too close to a line without your signal on. Um, there is a way to disable it. I have not done so because we are not allowed to alter the trucks. I've honestly thought about asking about doing it or just doing it and hope they don't notice. I'm not going to do that last one because that would be my job. But nonetheless, there is a button that I can press to disable it. That's what I've been doing for now, but it's on a timer. So like after like 10 minutes, I think it kicks back on, which is annoying, but beats getting yelled at for altering the truck. Uh, it has automatic braking. So if you have cruise control on and, you know, say you're messing with the radio or messing with your CB or, you know, you're looking in your mirror and you're not paying attention to what's in front of you because, you know, sometimes you have to check your mirror. Um, and somebody slams on their brakes in front of you. The truck will automatically hit the brakes. I don't like it. I don't mind it. And that's the hard part. The duality of it is I don't like it and I don't love it. And it's simply because I don't want the truck to drive for me. I, that's my job to brake for it. But um, the fact that it's there for somebody as new as me who you know, may not notice things as quickly and be able to react as quickly. Um, I think it's perfect. I do not mind having the automatic braking. I do mind the lane departure system. I don't like that. They also have these arrow kits on the sides of the truck, which makes it a little difficult to check like brakes and stuff like that when doing pre-trip, especially when you have a trailer on. Um, greasing your fifth wheel is a little difficult because of it. You can't see your lug nuts, so you have to individually take off the little side covers. I've been leaving mine off. I've taken them off and put them in my side compartments. Um, simply because I want to make sure I can see my lug nuts. I want to just be able to look in the wheel well, or the inside the wheel, and see if I have any loose or missing lug nuts. Um... So that's, that's the only reason I have them off, I guess. Um, what else? What else? What else? Pay. Okay, so after I got off on my own and I got my truck and I started, you know, doing runs, um, I realized that the pay scale was wrong. Uh, I was told it was 40 cents a mile when I went through school. And come to find out, it's actually only 30 cents a mile as a graduate. You can earn up to 45 cents a mile um, as a company driver. So to me, I felt a little bit cheated. I felt a little bit lied to. I was a little bit pissed. But I didn't let it get to me. I didn't let it break me. I didn't let it change my viewpoint of the company. Because it was Driver Solutions that told me wrong, not Pam. And... After about two months at 30 cents a mile, I got bored. I got on the TransFlow app, which is an app you'll have to download uh, once you get with your mentor. And I found a dedicated lane to Flowery Branch, Georgia, from Sterling Heights, Michigan, which I live in Michigan. I am not far from Sterling Heights at all. So, uh, fast forward to now, I'm actually on my way to go pick up the load that's going to Sterling Heights. I'm currently in Kentucky. Um, 
Sorry, my throat's getting dry. Um, I got bumped up to 40 cents a mile after only two months with the company. I've got full benefits. I've got a great truck. Right now, I've got a great trailer. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this trailer. I freaking love this trailer. I'm going to hate dropping it off in Sterling Heights. Um, I've got great dispatchers. I mean, they literally, they do not care what your reasoning is. If you tell them, I have to stop, I do not feel comfortable driving, they don't care. Okay, that's fine. You can stop. It does not matter to them how hot the load is, how late the load is, uh, what the load is, how far you are from dropping the load off. It don't matter to them. What they want is for you to be safe and for you to be okay. They could give a rat's ass about the truck. They could give a rat's ass about the load. When it comes to your safety and your comfort as a driver, that is their number one. And that to me is why having to do my one year contract with this place makes it a cut above the rest. I mean, it's worth going through the program to only have a one year contract and to have dispatchers that actually give a damn about you. I mean, they might not know your name right off the bat, but they will know that you are important and they will value your life over the load. So that to me spoke volumes because if I went with Swift or Ryder, uh, CR England, CR England definitely, I have heard so many bad things about CRE that I'm glad I backed out of their program. I was going to go with CRE, but I decided last minute to just go with Pam. Um, so to me, the fact that my dispatchers care about me, it, this company is literally a cut above the rest because of that. Um, yes, we are a mega carrier. Pam is. But, honestly, it don't feel like one. Yeah, our trucks are governed. Yeah, they're turned down. Yeah, they're kind of ugly. I mean, they're plastic. It's not like I'm driving a long nose Pete, you know, or an old school Freightliner, you know. I don't have a cool truck. But, it gives me the experience I need, and I got people that care about me here. So... Honest to God, it is one of the easier companies to get into. Um, let's talk about their drug testing process. So, um, all they did for me was a urinalysis. I mean, I don't know how it'll be for everybody else, but for anywhere else, but to my understanding, all they do is a DOT test. You pee in a cup. That's it. They don't do hair follicles or anything like that. And that was part of the other reason I didn't want to go to CR England or anything like that. I didn't want any of my hair cut off. I got no reason to worry. I'm good. But I know some people out there, you know, they want to give up smoking to give, their, give themselves or give their families a better life. And, you know, that's something I'm noticing too. That's actually quite a trend is people are giving up smoking so they can come do this. And they're met with hostility. And I want people to know if you ever see me out on the road, you know, I'm not somebody that's hostile towards that stuff. I actually used to back in high school. So I get it. You cannot do it while you're doing this. You cannot, you have to get rid of it all, get it out of your system. Because if you get caught, if you get popped on a drug test, you will be blacklisted. You cannot get a truck driving job. You cannot hold a Class A license. So, take that as you will. I mean, this was back when I was in high school, so obviously I grew up, and y'all are too. So, uh, let's see, what else? What else, what else, what else? God, there's got to be more. Hmm. 
Okay, so let's talk about some of the negative things about Pam Transporter. That was all most of the positives. Uh, let's talk about some of the negatives. So, one of the negatives is communication with this company. It can be good, it can be bad. And a lot of times I've noticed after about five o'clock is it's bad. It's harder than hell to get a hold of somebody. Not sure why. But it is. Uh, it would honestly be easier to contact Jesus sometimes. Um, another negative that they have is you need permission from them to do just about anything. Whether it's going to a different fuel station, taking a different road, having a passenger in the truck, having a pet in the truck. So their pet policy is a little bit ridiculous. It is $500 deposit you have to pay five hundred dollars for a security deposit and then after that pet can't weigh more than 10 pounds the fuck are you gonna bring with you a fucking chihuahua or a cat an iguana so that's one of the downfalls right there uh you know with being over the road Trucking is very lonely, and to me, it actually really is lonely. I, re I rarely hear my phone go off or anything like that. So having a pet would honestly help with that, but I'm not going to get a chihuahua or a cat. I'm, not, I'm damn sure not bringing a cat out here. Oh, God. So having a 10-pound weight limit really does restrict you on what you can bring as a pet um i wish they would lighten up on that a little bit especially with the 500 hundred dollar deposit the rider policy you can get just about anybody to ride with you uh i think it's over the age of 13 so if you have a kid a nephew something like that you can take them but you have to fill out a form they have to approve it and I think to get them to be able to ride with you again once that trip is over, you have to fill out another form. It's not like you can just take them whenever. Uh, my wife has rode in the truck once um, just to go home. Uh, she had been brought out to her parents' house, which is where I brought the truck, to show them. And she didn't have a way home, so we just quickly rode home in the truck. And then I found out uh, that's when you need to have a rider for them. Because I called them and was asking about it. I was curious. So it's a good thing I called and asked. But um, what else is there? So the truck. A negative thing about the truck. These things are dogs. And what I mean by dogs, if you've heard that term before, you know what I'm talking about. But... When you're loaded about 73,000 pounds, which is what I average with this dedicated lane, um, you know, going up a hill, you slow down to about 40 miles an hour. Uh, 40 miles an hour, and that's with you downshifted as far as you can manually, and with the RPMs up. Um, so unfortunately, you know, you got cars and trucks blowing by you 55, 60 miles an hour, and here you are struggling to climb this hill at 40 with your hazards on. Uh, all due to the sake of uh, fuel economy. Fuel economy is more important than being able to climb a hill effectively. Which to me, I would think climbing the hill faster means less fuel. But I guess not. I guess I'm wrong. Um, but honestly, I think that's all of the negatives with Pam Transport. There's really not a lot. I mean, if you can look past the pay, there's really not a lot of it. Oh, wait. Ah, nope. Take that back. They will push teams and mentorship on you when you're fairly new. 
Before I got my truck, they tried to push me to go team. I wasn't having it. I cannot share this small of a space with another person for weeks at a time, months at a time. I can't do it. There's no way I'd be packing my shit and getting dropped off in the middle of fucking nowhere. And it's simply because I cannot trust a stranger with my life. Um, can't share this small of a space for longer than two, three weeks. And I'm sorry, I just can't do it. So I told the company, no. <sighs> I'm getting tired. Um, mentorship they have not asked me about yet. From the sounds of it, you actually now have to um, ask them to be a mentor. Because I guess what was going on for a little while was uh, people were being asked to mentor. And they've only had their CDL for three weeks, four weeks. So I guess they changed that. But I guess that was going on for a little while. Uh, I have no interest in becoming a mentor. I, I just don't. So, but other than that, there's really not a lot of negativity or downfalls to working for Pam. Everybody has a different experience, and keep that in mind. What you get out of this company is what you put into it. So if you come into this thinking, oh, it's going to be easy... You know, I'm just going to cruise two, three hundred miles a day and, you know, call it quits. Yeah, that's great if you want to run on your recaps. If you want to actually make some fucking money, though, you got to put in 550, 600 miles a day. And that is very difficult to do um, for a new driver. So you've got to be willing to put in the work to see that work come back to you. Um, it's a very much give and take industry and it's a very much a give and take company. You give them effort, they'll put effort into you. That's pretty much why I, at least to me, that's pretty much why I got the dedicated lane is because I went wherever they wanted me to. I busted my ass to get it there. I went above and beyond to take care of this truck and they saw that and that's why they gave me the lane. Because typically, you're supposed to have at least, fuck, what was it? Uh, I think, I think it was six months experience you had to have to get this lane. And I got it in two. So, Pam is a give and take company. And you've got to remember that. So, your experience is going to reflect based on how you perform. If you have... A bad time here it's because you didn't do good and if you have a great time here it's because you did good now people that worked here you know five six ten years ago it's different it's different now than it was then I've met so many people that have said oh I worked for Pam X amount of years ago and it was horrible yeah they had different management they've gone through an entire management I guess reassignment to my understanding so the company is being ran completely different now i have not met a single person that's actually upset with pam that's worked here in the past five years uh there have been people that were upset with the company about 10 years ago two of them i actually met and they worked here about 10 years ago so back then yeah i'm sure it was a bad company but now that's how it is you get what you put in, and you put in what you want back. No more, no less. Uh, I really hope this helps people make their decision. Uh, I know when I was looking for a company or a starter CDL school, you know, there were so many options. I didn't know which one to choose. I went with Pam because it had the shorter uh, contract limit and the no manual restrict or the no automatic restriction. Um. But I round up running into so many negative things online, uh, reviews and such, that I actually wound up worrying, uh, you know, did I make the right choice? So I hope this video helps you kind of piece that together and realize, you know, this might not be a bad opportunity. I don't want there to be people out there worrying like I did, 
you know, am I making the right choice? Because I made that choice and I don't regret it. I've had a great time with this company and they've been good to me. And I hope they're good to you too if you decide to come here. Um, and if you don't come here, you know, good luck on all of your endeavors. I hope, I wish you the best. And just keep us in mind, you know, keep Pam in mind if the place you go to doesn't work out, you know, because even if you don't get your CDL through Pam, if you don't have a lot of experience, they'll still hire you. I think it's, actually, I think they'll hire you with no experience. So even if you go two weeks at your employer that got you your license and it don't work out, Pam will still hire you they'll bring you in they'll get you in a truck or they'll get you with a mentor whichever you need and you'll be making some money i mean it's not great money it's not bad money either i walk home with about seven to nine hundred dollars a week depending on how i run depending on the weather the load yada yada um so it's not great money it's not bad money everything you know it's one of those companies that everything you need will be paid for you know, your car, or whatever else, it'll be paid off. But you're not going to go out and buy, you know, a Lamborghini or some shit. So, do with that information what you will. I'm going to get out of here. I got to hit the bed. So, hope you enjoyed.